Hi Bruce, thank you very much for coming back to Queen Mary. Uh, my name's Ashley, I'm a postgraduate history student at Queen Mary and I'm going to ask you a few questions that students have submitted and I'm interested to find out your thoughts on. Excellent. Um, first up, what are your memories of playing in the Great Hall? I played here with a band we were called Speed and we used to rehearse mm -hmm. in I think it was Lindhurst Hall or something up in the halls of residence right. in a, some old deserted kitchen that they'd abandoned. <laughs> really? uh, and we used to, uh, uh, Nick, um, borrow the college minibus, <laughs> take the seats out and go and do gigs in Plumstead <laughs> and then sneak back at three o'clock in the morning and put the seats back in now. Oh, health and safety, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, those are little entrepreneurial activities. Do you think choosing history shaped what you did in your future career in any way? Um, um, no. It didn't, uh, but what it did do was it shaped the way that I uh, looked at the world. Um, and uh, I, I go all misty-eyed and slightly academic now uh, because um, I cheerfully confess that, um, you know, for the first two years uh, of my history degree, I had a whale of a time. Uh, I was a social sec, I was active in student politics, I, I was in bands, I was doing this, I was doing all kinds of things. Actually, fantastic life experiences, which I would have been unable to do um, had I not been employed at Her Majesty's <laughs> Pleasure in a university. Um, and <clears throat> without that, I wouldn't be here talking to people today about mm -hmm. entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff. Whilst I'm not, uh, I, I don't think I'm cut out for a, a the life of being a permanent academic, um, th there's a great deal to be said for just engaging your brain purely for the sake of it. And what was your standout memory of being a student in East London? This place, when it was uh, done out for bizarre things, real ale and Cadley evenings, right. <laughs> knee deep in like curry and like your feet stuck to the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's absolutely pristine now, it's lovely. Um, uh, but it was, um, it was quite an earthy place uh, mm -hmm. back then. Right. You mentioned being in a band when you, or your first professional band when you graduated. Was that your first job or did you have to do something else immediately? After uh, no, I was, I think I was probably responsible for m mucking up the one way traffic system in Hoxton because <laughs> I, I had a job as a, uh, uh, well, it wasn't really a job really, it was an awful thing really. It was a, uh, I, I, doing traffic surveys. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I used to stand on a street corner, you had to note all the cars that turned left and all the cars that turned right. And, uh, mm -hmm. In the end, I, I used to sit in the cafe and I just made it all up. <laughs> um, so on the basis of that, they, used to, they made new one-way systems and everything else. You know, we'd mm -hmm. walk up and down, note which cars had parked <laughs> where, which cars had moved and all the rest of it. And uh, it was desperate stuff, it really was. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but on the other hand, it was better than giving uh, um, stomach acid samples. Uh, which uh, a lot of my yeah. mates did because, uh, yeah, med they basically turned themselves into medical experiments because <laughs> uh, it, pay it, pay it, it, it it got them off the bread line, yeah. you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, and that I moved in, in the end after I, um, after I, I, I did my finals here in the morning and then in the afternoon I was rehearsing down in Greenwich. You've been described as a polymath, maybe not as good a traffic surveyor, but a businessman, pilot, singer, writer, what would be your top three tips for becoming an entrepreneur? Golly, um, uh, find, find a niche, uh, find, something, find something that people want mm -hmm. and that you can provide or you can put together a group of people who can provide it and you have to make sure that in some way you're, you're essential to the mix because um, if you're not, mm. Motivation, motivation, motivation. Yeah. Why, why, why is your, what is your reason for existence in the, in the mix? Um, so if you can bring something to the party and you make, make something happen which people really want, mm -hmm. then you're being an entrepreneur. Um, and that requires determination and, uh, and, and a lot of it. And it will probably take longer than you think. Mm -hmm. uh, and the spark and the, the germ of the idea is great. You dream that up in the pub and then in the cold light of day, um, it can take months mm -hmm. um, to, to follow it through. And the other one is uh, make sure that you pick your partners well, uh, that their motivation is parallel or in the same focus as you and they're not going to stitch you up. Mm -hmm. What is an average day like for Bruce Dickinson? I don't have one. I mean, at, at the moment, I don't have one. Yeah. So, um, setting up your airline, I guess. Well, 
Uh, it's it's various things. I mean, I, I do chats and speeches and talks and things like that. Um, uh, we're trying to develop a diesel engine, so I'm fielding clients and trying to find investors for that, trying to market this airship. Uh, I still uh, teach in simulators as well at weekends. Right. Um, so, um, you know, I'm reasonably busy and I get phone calls from all kinds of bits and bobs mm -hmm. as well. And of course, I'm still the lead singer of Iron Maiden. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when we launch things, I do press and bits and bobs around that. Um, but principally, like May, June, July yeah. uh, next year, set aside for Iron Maiden. Making yourself indispensable. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully they won't do it, go, they won't do it without me. <laughs> yeah. Finally, an Iron Maiden question. Oh, God, yes. Off. Okay. Um, Iron Maiden fans are known for their devotion. Yep. What do you say the craziest, the most dedicated thing a fan has done? Um, gosh, well, um, I've had all kinds of things happen yeah. to me. I've had people want me to sign their pets. Pets? Pets, yeah. Like with live, real, actual <laughs> really? pets, furry animals, things like that. Anything I always awesome? find, that, find that slightly strange. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, the, they are astonishingly dedicated um, and, and I sometimes use it as a, an example of how how uh, how successful we've been with you know our relationship with our fans that they are so so dedicated and I sometimes use it when I do talks with businesses I say well hang on a minute are your customers as dedicated as Iron Maiden fans towards your brand and your mm -hmm. product and if not why not if after 35 years we're still growing and we are still essentially the same, you know, we're the same band, we're the same genre of music, you know, we haven't reinvented ourselves by, you know, um, uh, you know, different haircuts and mm -hmm. all the rest of it just for the sake of reinventing ourselves like some focus group or something. Um, if we've succeeded after all, this, all these years, then surely there's a lesson to be learned there for some businesses on how we've done it and how they may, might be able to do it. And it, it, it's, it's simple but difficult to do. And it's just look after the customer, look after your fan, mm -hmm. and they'll come back. Bruce, thank you very much. Yeah.